Yeah, all cars now lined up for the first time here at Road Atlanta here in semi-final action as now we await for them to go racing here and it's pedal to the metal and it is go, 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 go. Kevin Ellis Jr. got away so strong as he now makes his way through the first section. Of course, he's got to, he's got to find his way through now past this dogged right-hander down the straight through towards the S's and straight away, Kevin Ellis Jr. giving a nice tidy advantage at the front for ART with Team Redline waiting in the wings in behind. Yeah, a bit of a struggle on the start there from Marcel Chinchik, almost dropped back into the clutch of those behind us, found his form though, Poo to oh. That's a massive moment though, that is huge. Was that Dane Warren or was that, yeah, it was Warren, out way wide, taking a lot of the gravel and just being sent up to the sky, losing out eight positions in doing so. That is the tough point on the track. The S section can catch you out. And unfortunately, if you're Dane Warren, you have been caught out. Now he sees himself just ahead of Thomas Tabler and Erhan Yoski, who also struggles right at the back of the field, trying to gain places. And is, it definitely is not just an uphill climb here at this point as they run up towards turn six, but here at this point, not being in the top six here in this race format is obviously going to send you out of tonight's round. As we now see, oh, a deep dive there, running very messily there. Robbie Stapleford as he tries to defend the place. Dane Warren will take full advantage on the outside of turn and seven and snuffs it out from underneath him as now we see wheel to wheel battling here between Stapleford and Thomas Tatler. Watch out for the three wide, here comes Yoski making it down the inside of the first corner. This is surely going to end in tears. The Macedonian sends it through, up two for the price of one, and Robbie Stapleford is sent down the road. Yeah, he's having a real rough time out there. It's gone from bad to worse. Yoski, though, it's gone better for him. Two places gained already. He's ahead of Tatler. He's ahead of Stapleford now, but needs to try and hold back the force from this heroic Porsche as they look to now make their way through the slalom once again, heading down the hill now this time around as we now see Dara McCormack currently sat in fifth place. He's got his teammate down in eighth as well, Jakob Brzezinski, who's going to try and leapfrog his way past Jeffrey Rietveld, who unfortunately sees himself just outside the top six. Ryan Barneveld, should it stay like this, will go through to a final, which I'm sure he'll be delighted with. But Kevin Ellis Jr. impressing up at the front end, already half a second in front and keeping Luke Bennett behind. Just going to say it, by the way, the top five at the moment, uh, all five of my picks to go through. Um, I would quite like Jeffrey Rietveld <laughs> to make a move on Ryan Barnevelt for no specific reason, nothing against BMW and Team Beers competition, but I want to win. And here goes Jeffrey Rietveld straight down the inside from 10A, 10B, oh. big slide there from Ryan Barnevelt. Rietveld gets himself inside the top six. Yeah, we expected Road Atlanta to be chaotic. It has been that. Jakub Brzezinski now looking to make big moves too to perhaps join his teammate Dara McCormack into the top six. That's a little bit of work to do though and could yet face jeopardy as now Dane Warren, who is rapid, losing places at the very start. Remember when he made his way through the S's as they now come over the crest. Wheel to wheel again. It is literally rear white to front left as they make contact heading through the slalom. And now we see them come together. Dane Warren fighting back as he tucks down the inside. Porsche Coanda in the ascendancy Dane Warren he's looking to get the bit between his teeth and force his car straight back up the field yeah I know that's only for eighth position but can I just say what an unbelievable move from Dane Warren great drive between himself and Brzezinski showing the experience showing the ability to race around here I mean it's a fantastic track it is genuinely it is in my top five greatest tracks on the entire planet it can be a little bit tricky to race but when you get moves like that that you you have to earn them. You're never gifted this move. It's not just a big slip stream down into a corner and then you dive it down the inside. You have to work for the move, even coming down here into the chicane. Yeah, it is all about that slip stream, but you have to commit. You have to be brave. You have to send it in, and you have to take quite a lot of that curb, which, trust me, the curbs on the inside of this corner are very risky. They will absolutely spin you around if you take too much. We saw a bit of a look there from uh, Timis Tatner on the back end of Erhan Yovsky. What a brilliant race there uh, between the pair of them. Ellis Jr., though, leading, and what I was going to say, Merck over BMW. We do see the BMW you struggle a little bit for tyre wear towards the end of the race and I fear Luke Bennett might be on the uh, on the end of that unless he gets through pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely right indeed. He's closed the gap, Luke Bennett. Brought it into within, uh, well, it's nearly three tenths of a second away, so two tenths gained already since we last looked. Kevin Ellis Jr. with the fastest lap so far as well as they head through the next slalom section over the crest again. The scenes of where we saw Dane Warren make that fabulous overtake. Of course, that was also the point where he lost the car earlier on in the race as well and has now had to enter into fight back mode. He's right now, well, he's right behind uh, Ryan Barneveld. Half a second separates them, but Barneveld's in trouble here because he's in P7 and that Delta is going outwards. He could yet see him go outside a second from Jeffrey Rierveld in sixth place. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, to be fair, to, say, to see him inside the top six, to see him on the form, I, I think he's got to be very proud of himself because he's clearly found a lot of speed coming into, uh, into Red Runner. In fact, we've seen him go well up before anyway, fair enough. Um, yes, you're being outside the top six to be disappointed. He was looking for, for a final. But to be honest, again, pace-wise, been brilliant so far. Here comes a move, Yovsky versus Brzezinski. These two have seen fight time and time again over on Arfax 2. Doors open for Timis Tatler to potentially sneak his way through uh, in that heroic car. He'll be very disappointed with where he is. Obviously, he's inside the top 24 in the points, so he is at the moment going to Sweden, but he can't afford too many missteps. There's another move coming from Yovsky. Yeah, absolutely. He also has to defend away as well from Robbie Stapleford. Thomas Tatler as well in behind uh, Stapleford, unfortunately, two seconds uh, behind, so he's quite away behind, but he's starting to try and garner that pace back as they enter the slalom S section. Uh, there we see Thomas Tatler, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, maybe slightly frazzled, has actually lost quite a considerable amount of time. Let's take a look at a replay here. Oh, that was the moment where Dave Morin lost the car altogether. Of course, though, he would get redemption at that same spot on track. It would lead to him elevating himself up the order and has garnered him that eighth place. Yeah, honestly, that was... Um scary that was really really scary the thing is normally when you see a car you know go out that wide you, they are allowed to go out as far as the cones um, on the exit of turn five uh, which is very common around road atlanta that's not just a, a rule that we've got here in eslr1 or uh, you know just for this competition just here in Rensport. if that is the rule even in real life they're allowed to use that curb all the way out there and then as long as they bring it back in the road what makes it cool corner to be honest uh, but if you get uh, a big bit of air or you get uh, you know awkwardly placed on the curb Generally speaking, you end up in that wall on the right-hand side. So he's got very fortuitous there that he's still in the race and still sort of has an outside chance of moving his way through. He's got to get past Ryan Barnum and then close down what will eventually be, uh, by the time he gets past, a one and a half second gap. Maybe it's too large, but with Dane Warren's speed, I don't think it is. It's just he's not going to get too many opportunities late in the race if he does get past pretty soon. Yeah, a little bit of understeer, I think, creeping into Ryan Barnevelt there, as well as the BMW flies through the first sector. Just look at Dane Warren, speak about his quality pace. Of course, we've spoken that it definitely is his strong suit. Of course, now starting to show it here in a race format. Obviously, we saw him take race victory in yesterday's knockout phase, as we alluded to. Uh, of course, being in race two of that uh, night. And uh, now coming back again, looking to try and force his way into the top six. But Ryan Barnevelt now dropping tenth by tenth away from Jeffrey Rierfeld. And while this is the case, of course, Dane Warren, as a consequence, will also be losing Delta as well. So he needs to get past his BMW if he wants to stand any chance of getting his way into the top six. And we're on lap six of 12. Those laps, certainly around Road Atlanta, very fast-paced circuit here. They can fall away very quickly. Yes, yeah, insanely high speed uh, around the circuit. The average speed is, is incredibly high because, I mean, this chicane here is basically the slowest you get onto the circuit, and it's not even that slow. It's a pretty quick chicane down the inside. Dane Warren's going to go, moving himself into seventh position. The inside line still being taken, almost a bit of contact between the pair of them, with the Porsche Coanda driving out up into seventh place. Needs one more to progress further on in this competition today, but I think they're all embroiled in a fight for seventh, and I don't think there is a chance of getting oh, in the top no. six. Contact between Brzezinski and Barnabelle. They're both out in the barrier. Absolutely, oh, and an evasive action for Robbie Stapleford as well, who managed to dodge it, dodge it so well. I mean, obviously, Jakob Brzezinski, credit to him for controlling the car to a certain degree to avoid the collision, put the brakes on, obviously trying to prevent the collision between him and Robbie Stapleford. Stapleford taking evasive action. We rejoin, though, with Kevin Ellis Jr. up at the front end and has managed his race superbly well. He's still got Luke Bennett, though, probing in behind, though. The gap, though, has gone out. Remember, it was three tenths. It's now nearly touching six tenths, nearly doubled already. Lap seven of 12 now. Chinchik also coming into the mix as well. But look at Dane Warren. The gap now two seconds separating him and Rietveld. Yeah, I mean, look. At the moment, I think with the top six, where, where we sometimes see, like, you know, when we go racing at like Hockenheim or Spa or whatever, um, yeah, we'll sometimes see those racing inside the top six. Uh, as I think this this will actually kind of go back to how we were last season. Um, you know, obviously before we introduced points uh, being gifted out during the uh, yeah, the, the, the knockouts and the finals. I think people will not be wanting to take any major risks here. They will want to, to take this one one race at a time, get their way into the final. If you try and go side by side through here at almost any point the circuit you are increasing your risk tenfold and the chance of there being an incident is super high i think everyone's pretty calm and they're just ex excited about getting to the final here well it's been a thriller here at road atlanta but we've still got a small matter of four laps to go and here at this stage as we now see joshua rogers still calm and composed porsche commander can enjoy at least one car going through into the final later on tonight but of course dave Warren would love to make it too he has actually started to poke around that delta a little unsteady though, as we now saw, uh, we just saw Joshua Rogers coming over the crest. There's Jeffrey Rietveld. As you 
can see at the bottom left-hand corner, still as composed as ever. I think just wants to bring the car home in one piece, just wants to make sure that at least he's in the top six and can bring himself into the final equation. It's been a very solid Team Redline run so far, with Luke Bennett doing extremely well in second place after that stellar qualifying lap that put him on the front row of the grid before we hit pedal to the metal here in semi-final one. As they make their way down the straight now, over the crest again, down the hill as well, just slightly. Just see them now all beckoning their way, all nose to tail, near enough. Uh, though Darren McCormack now outside a second of Joshua Rogers here at this point as the Porsche it seems to be going so, so well around this track here at this stage. As we now see Chinchik, or should I say Johan Yoski, trying to close down on Dane Warren. His teammate currently sits Marcel Chinchik in third place, which is good news for my prediction here, Lewis McGlade. Yeah, what I was going to say, by the way, speaking of your predictions and what's concerning me the most in this race, with Jeffrey Riefeld starting to struggle again, maybe BMW tyres here, uh, starting to struggle a little bit. Dane Warren closing in. If uh, if Warren gets through, that's 100% for you, six out of six. So uh, we'll all keep our fingers crossed for that not to happen. Um, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're not panicking. Uh, but no, Dane Warren, yeah, I, I think he will have the race. I think he will almost certainly get a chance to go for, for Riefeld here, but needs to have a, an essentially a perfect run here. There can be no mistakes for Warren in the next four laps around Red Atlanta, which, by the way, is really difficult, even for the drivers at the very best. Uh, and I'm sure the heart rates are through the roof at the moment. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Uh, we saw, obviously, uh, many of them practicing around at Road Atlanta and mustering in a lot of time, and they had to in such a short space of time. Only around a week to two weeks they've had of practice around this track, and obviously it does take uh, certainly, in many cases, a long time to muster in optimal pace around a circuit. And, uh, here at Road Atlanta, where there's so much variance and obviously high-speed sections, it's very tricky to dial yourself in. But uh, obviously, from what we've seen, the driver's doing a splendid job of managing that fact now as we see them take the in-swinger heading through towards the home main straight. There you can see now on our, on our screen, Erhan Yoski getting right and tucked in behind the magnificent Macedonian who has brought certainly some stellar results for RAG. Look at a joint chin chick up into the top six, but now on lap 10 of 12, it only leaves a small matter of two laps left to go here in this race. And Dane Warren, he's going to be a great wall, but look at the gap between Warren and Rienveld. 1.4 now, five tenths leaking away from Jeffrey Rienveld and Warren starting to get on the attack. And I, uh, is it your birthday, George? Because I've just been given a, a, a bit of information which might be considered a birthday present for you. Uh, oh. Jeffrey Rieveld has a one second time penalty which will be applied post race. Oh. So Dane Warren, if he wants to go further in this competition, he needs to get within that one second. It's 1.3, he's three tenths outside it at the moment. He could progress, and I'm pretty sure he's well aware of that. I'm pretty sure Erhan Yuyovsky is well aware of that. He will want to get past Warren and get within a second uh, of Rieveld and progress his way through to the final. That is a tall order if ever I've heard it we'll have to wait and see though but that gap currently sitting at 1.2 seconds two laps left to go it's going to grow in that middle sector slightly but it's going to come back in the final sector is what we're seeing here this is going to come down to thousands I believe well what was 1.2 could become two tenths so there we have it Dane Warren with a great chance here of ascending into the next round. Let's wait and see, or certainly the next race indeed, the final race of tonight to uh, decide who will be our uh, round victor here at Road Atlanta. There's Jovski, who will know that as well, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, Mehdi, the team boss, would have got in the ear of him and said, listen, you've got a great chance here. Just need to get yourself past Dane Warren and to within a second of Jeffrey Rienfeld, and you could yet go through, as now we see them come over the crest. Josh Rogers, right on the tail now of Marcel Chinchik. So RAG and Porsche Kuanda battling at two different zones in the classification. Nevertheless, it's, not, it's gonna get a lot hotter than this. Yeah, certainly so. Let's see if Rogers is going to try anything here on Marcel Chinchik. I think the uh, the idea of uh, a race victory for anyone else other than uh, Kevin Ellis Jr. has absolutely slipped through their fingers. Uh, Ellis Jr. is flying at the moment, looking for his third victory in the SLR1. Here comes a look from Marcel Chinchik. Luke Bennett starting to struggle just a little bit. And straight around the outside, that is going to be a move from Chinchik into second. I don't think Bennett was risking anything majorly there. Yeah, no, I don't think so, but Whoa! look at this, oh, goodness me, Josh Rogers very nearly lost it all, coming over the crest and nipping onto the grass, but as they make their way down the straight again, ahead of him, Luke Bennett as well, all fingers and thumbs as he looks to try and bring the car through this next right-hander, of course, he's got Chinchik ahead of him here in second place, as they look to make their way through, Bennett losing out big time as Chinchik consolidates himself in P2. 
Yeah, I don't think Rogers, by the way, was as calm as he looked in his webcam. I think that one's frozen because uh, he looked like he uh, wasn't moving at all. And I'm not even joking. I think it was absolutely locked in place. Uh, things are getting dramatic for Jeff Rietveld because at the moment he's now dropped back to nine tenths of a second clear. I think he's going to be dropping back behind Warren at the moment as Rogers is feeling the pressure through him. It's Dara McCormack, of course it is. Yeah, Darren McCormack now only two tenths away and starting to try and pull himself together. They see him in the bottom left-hand corner. Points speed prizes. The higher you are up, the better points you score. And that's certainly what's on Darren McCormack's mind, certainly on Williams Esports' mind as well as they make their way down the straight once again and for the final time here on this lap. Certainly the final time in this race as they make their way now down through towards the final chicane here on this circuit. They beckon their way through, but Luke Bennett will have no way to certainly try and challenge this. Jakub Brzezinski right at the tail of the field as they now make their way around the crest. This man, though, I'm sure will celebrate. He is not only a four-time podium sitter, he's not only one-time a race winner, he's two-time a race winner. It's Kevin Ellis Jr. who takes victory here. And uh, what a courageous drive from this young man. It all started with a vibrant pole position. He then closed it out in truly clinical fashion. Apex Racing Team Mercedes can celebrate here in the, in the United States with a stellar result for their man. It's Kevin.